keep trying really hard. We'll keep trying, we'll make it work. We're trying so hard, man, to make this work. I know. <laughs> trying so hard. All right, guys, this is gonna be our last attempt, so if this fails, just yeah. know that we love you and we try. We, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> if this fails, it falls through, so. Um, Cause yeah, service is quite spotty and we're slowly leaving civilization even more as we speak. Yeah, we keep pushing, we keep starting when we get to cities and then pushing into dark areas with no light. And then Sorry we lose signal, that. but uh, yes, happy Thanksgiving and we can't wait. It's weird that tomorrow's Thursday and there's no game. I know, it's supposed to be where we left it off. It become, uh. It's become so ingrained into our system. Although in a weird way, like, because it's almost like this week, like, time has been different. Because I feel like normally the weeks feel so long getting to Thursday. But now I, I think because I was anticipating it being a two-week break, yeah. I feel like this is more of a... This feels like a halfway point. I don't know. It's weird to describe. But, yes. I can go. You can go. Yes. <laughs> it's good. It's weird. We miss it. It's um, Yeah, I think they are doing a rebroadcast tomorrow, actually. So, if you guys want to catch up on Critical Role or have nothing better to do, or... Um, does football still happen on Thanksgiving Day? Normally, I'm not, I'm not the football. person to ask this. If you don't want to watch football, you can watch Critical Role. Which would be kind of fun. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry, I have to enjoy the fact that you turned to me to ask me a football question. That's, that's delightful. Well, I don't know. I just... Never mind. <laughs> Three games. Yes, there's a lot of football happening tomorrow. There's cool. always football. So there you go. You there's can, always football. You guys can play your footballs. Um, yeah. Outdoor things. And how about that comic this week, you guys? How about that comic that came out today? Am I right? When did it great on that, man. I am so in love with it. I'm not gonna lie, this might be, out of all of the ones that Talis and I have written for this arc that are coming up, this one I was kind of the most excited for, and she did not disappoint. So it's definitely one of, one of my favorite ones that we came up with, and she did a really good job on it. I was, I was happy with it. You should be, you great. I was happy with it. I know, I know that the comic is really short, but um, that we are making do with the budget that we got. So that is what we were able to get approved, and that's... The, the time that the artists have to work on it, too, for that much turnaround. I mean, if... Yeah, the, the time and... If this goes well, we'd like to do more with it and actually you know, produce... I mean, pie in the sky, I'd, I'd love to be able to... to put together like an actual comic based on previous exploits of Vox Machina and stuff. It's, that'd be a really fun thing. But it's it's also one of those things that are the time consuming and expensive and uh, you know. That's why we've been pushing people so hard to go look at it because as long as people go look at the comic, we can possibly get more comic. But yeah, the reason why it's so short is because that's what we got to work with right now. Um, yeah, for the people who are asking, there is go go to geekandsundry.com, and we now have a weekly uh, Critical Role Vox Machina comic strip. So definitely go check it out because right size, they're like four panels each yeah, week. Yeah, it's like a, like all, a comic strip, yeah. like like Family Ties or Marmaduke or Family Ties. Wait, what did I say? Family Circus is what I meant. <laughs> Family Ties was the best comic strip I've ever seen. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> the crossover with the Avengers is pretty intense, too. You ever seen like, the Fox and Fighter Four? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad for maintaining signal. This is nice. Uh, people are saying, someone said, you voiced Crom on in Fire Emblem? In Fire Emblem Awakening, yes. And then they said, I thought that was Crispin. No, no, Crispin voices all the other cooler characters. Yeah, yes. Crispin's everyone else. Yeah. But he's probably. I am. But thank you for being the wind of my back in this sort of mix up. Oh. And I have a, a bird sitter for Dagon. Don't worry. Dagon's one, not in the car, and two, not abandoned or left alone. 
Yeah, I know. Dagon's take, Dagon Dagon doesn't do is, well with drive, driving at all. Dagon gets carsick. I know. I didn't know birds can do that. Yeah, I birds think. get carsick. I don't know if you guys know that, but birds get carsick. She starts hyperventilating, she starts throwing up. And we're like, no, no. It's you so wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think, but birds get carsick. They're a yeah. uh, little. They're a little equilibrium in their brain. They do not. Yeah, they they do they not do well. like the driving. It gets weird for them. It's interesting. We have to put her in a little box and kind of cover up when we take her. To the, yeah, we have to like bed. make it dark, and I have to like be a shock system and be like, "Don't look outside! Don't look outside!" <laughs> it's like people who are um, who get motion like seasickness. It's kind of like that. Don't look at the horizon. Yeah. You'll know you're driving. Exactly. And then you'll get sick. Oh, uh, uh, I've had a few questions about this. I wanted to just mention you guys too fast. I mentioned the updates to the witch hunter class. Um, I'm working on those, um, a lot of adjustments, the inspiration, I mean, a lot of it stemmed from the fact that the, the character class was, you know, sort of inspired through the preparation for the Vin Diesel game, but I had to tailor it to what little information I had on his character. And then the title Witch Hunter was tied to the movie, but it was also kind of a misnomer as the class didn't really have much to do with witches. That was just one of its quarry. And then some of the abilities were created based on what little information I had about the trailers of the film and such. So when once that film, kind of that whole promo event left, I kind of wanted to recreate the class in a way that was wholly my own and wasn't quite so directly affiliated to that, that film and that whole event. So I changed the name. Uh, I'm currently going with the uh, theme of I'm calling it a blood hunter. Uh, the idea being that it's, a, it's essentially a warrior that, uh, or a, a martial class that is so in tune with its its uh, its own physical vitality and its life force that it you know sacrifices and utilizes it through a series of like its uh, blood rites now called the crimson rite. It gets blood curses which it can gain more as it levels up and such, and those allow it to you know curse and manipulate enemies' physiology in small ways as well as kind of their own. Uh, imagine like a martial class blood magus, if you will. So instead of being all magic based, it's about enhancing and altering it. It's you know, martial prowess and small manipulations to the enemy. Um, so, uh, the blood warriors or the, the blood hunters, I'm calling it, should have some updates coming soon. I'm getting some great notes back. Uh, I'm actually getting some notes back from some folks on, on at Wizard about it. So um, that way, when I put it out, I can have it pretty, pretty well balanced based on community feedback and official company feedback, and I can feel a little more comfortable about throwing it out in the ether to be torn apart by the sharks. Um, but yeah, hopefully, I'll, <laughs> hopefully, I'll have that for you guys soon in some way, shape, or form. It's been a lot of fun to... Yeah, retool that... Homebrew, man. It's it's a process. <laughs> yeah, he was saying blood hunter, by the way, for anyone. Blood hunter, not void hunter or demon hunter. Blood hunter. Blood hunter, as, as kind of the essence of, of their uh, capabilities are through you know, forbidden blood magic and the ability to sacrifice their own vitality or you, you manipulate their own vitality to enhance their ability. So the... The blood is a very central theme to a lot of their capabilities and their magical prowess as part of their martial enhancement. So that's that's the theme. That's the, I mean, other than that, they're very similar. They're still creature hunters. They're still very much you know against demons, against fae, uh, dark fae, against uh, uh, ghosts and undead and stuff like that. So that those themes still lie in there, but the, but the core of that class is now based around uh, manipulation of its own vitality. So there you go. Word. Uh, and I, I wasn't looking at questions because I was trying to get good camera angles of your face. That's an impossible attempt. That's I, not I, true. I, 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 <laughs> I appreciate, true. appreciate your game. Someone else had a good question right before, and I was kind of was like, "Ooh, that's a good question. I'm gonna have to remember that one." And then I forgot about it. No, no, no. I don't know. Well, whoever was asking, if you had a good question, ask it again. If you had a good question, just ask it again, person who had a good question. We're just filtering the chat because I have to drive. Yeah. Uh, uh, ooh, that's actually a good, good question. Advice for making a, tief a tiefling cleric? Ooh. Oh, there's some great domains there. There's the trickery domain. Uh, there's the war domain. It depends on how... You know, the theme of your, if you want to truly embrace your demonic heritage or if you shun it entirely and your, your pious uh, 
development as a character is more to try and make recompense for what you deem yourself as a as a cursed bloodline. So generally, really, there's no wrong answers. No, it just people need to like uh, like just know that when building a character, there's no wrong answers as long as you're able to justify it. Yeah, you find you find a cool story aspect, a nice hook, and a reason for why you built the character the way you did, no matter how weird they are. You know, and people like some people complain that multi-classing isn't as powerful in long run as you know, sticking to a single class, and from a number standpoint, maybe, to a negligible degree, really, but, uh, it's all about making what's interesting to you to play in a game, you know, if you have a campaign that's heavily in the min-maxing dungeon crawl, then, you know, pick something that works in that degree, but... I, I actually really like what Taliesin had to say about it in his interview that he did, mm -hmm. uh, the written interviews that we did on Keek and Sundry, um, he said, like, his method for making characters is he always tries to make someone that he'd want to hang out with because especially if you're starting a long running campaign you are going to be with this person for a very 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 long time <laughs> so make someone you'd want to hang out with I think that's a really good tip <laughs> and you can make a punk or an asshole to a degree as long as there is some redeeming quality to them. Oh, I have a lot of friends who are assholes. Because because you also, the rest of your party has to hang out with you for that time as well. Right. Um, and unless you all agree that you want to make a party of terrible people and do like a short run evil campaign, maybe. That, I mean, Scanlan, Scanlan is kind of a scummy douchebag, but... But a he's lovable, still, scummy he's a lovable scummy douchebag. He's a lovable scummy douchebag. I have many, I've many friends that them. fall in that same category. They're like... You know, I shake my head at them quite often, but more often than not, you know, there's a good core there, and there's a good person. They just have very curious methods. Yeah, everyone has their vices. I do. I don't have any friends who like, you know, crapped on beds or anything that I know of. <laughs> that you know of. That I know of. That you know of. Totally. Uh, yeah. Druid second place. Druid second place to who? Nobody. That's what I say. Oh, snap. What, what? Those are fighting words. <laughs> Once again, guys, I apologize if we lose service. We're driving in the desert. I'm looking at my phone for, for service. So if we lose service here soon, happy Thanksgiving, and we love you guys so much. And we'll be back soonish. But, yeah. Nice um, what's the deal for this month's Christmas? It's happening on not yeah. this next episode, but the episode after. Yeah, the first the first uh, Thursday of the month. We're gonna try and do like a. Well, it's but we're pushing it this week. This because next Thursday, first Thursday of the month is next Thursday. Right, not this one, not, not next one. So it'd be two. Yeah, we're pushing it back to the second week this month because. We can't do the Thursday before Christmas. Christmas. We, we can't. We're not playing Christmas Eve, and then we can't do the week before because that's also the opening night of Star Wars, and pretty much the entire crew, as well as most everyone we know, He's are going go that night movie. to see that. Right. So we're gonna play. We're gonna end as close to ten as we can, and then let everyone go early. So we're gonna be doing our Christmas a week later than we normally would be. So it'll be the second Thursday of December, I think, is the current plan. Right. And I'm actually uh, be looking out for the website because I'm going to be putting out a Critter's Guide for Christmas here very soon. So, yes, to kind of help guide people because we've gotten a lot of questions on what to do and what to get. And one of the things that's going to be uh, talked about a lot in there is um, all of the charities that we all really like supporting because as much as we like stuff we really like it when people give to other charities and especially like give to people in our name and people have been doing that more and more and we really really like that yeah. um, it's it's a strange thing because because you know on, on one hand it's a really wonderful thing to share that you guys share with us your your your, your passion and your interest by by sending things which we never expected to ask for or thought would happen but it's, it's a really cool experience um, but at the same time you know it's also very strange to be receiving so many gifts to an extent you're like I, we're just people and uh, you know we would like to redirect 
some of that positivity towards great causes and stuff, you know, as opposed to having to, to buy a lot of things necessarily, you know, crafts and things you want to make or music or art, like all that stuff is fantastic. Um, but another great avenue that we really appreciate is giving to, to charities and supporting like the animal rescue uh, charities are great. The person that adopted that bear for Laura was great. Yeah, so there's someone who adopted a bear. And then we uh, we recently, we haven't talked about it on stream yet, but we got somebody who um, donated a bunch of seeds in our name. They like, like bought seeds uh, for farmers. It's a, it's a uh, charity and nonprofit organization that buys um, seeds and crops for farmers who might have lost their crops for the year due to drought or plant disease or extreme weather or anything that can happen to these poor farmers um, that can completely ruin their year if they lose their entire crop. So so this is an, or, an organization that will donate fresh crops and fresh seeds to farmers who might have lost their crops. Um, and coming from a farming family, uh, a and long a and a druid uh, definitely speaks to me because I know how much that sucks. I don't know what it's like when your family due to blight loses. Yes, due to blight. Exactly. <laughs> it's awful when you lose your crops due to blight. And the poor farmers in our in our country, poor farmers everywhere are not appreciated yeah. enough. Depending. Look at Whitestone. Mm. Look at Whitestone. Yeah, there. especially considering that farmers keep us alive. So farmers are often are awesome. So stuff like that is a great, great cause to donate to that we we always appreciate. Um, oh, that's awesome. There's a text that there's somebody that uh, local charity that buys Christmas trees for families. I think is what it said. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. The chat just went really fast. That's really cool. Um, that's really rad. Yeah, I like that. Um, and we've really enjoyed, like, giving back to, like, A26 and all that stuff has been, like, so rewarding and all the Extra yeah, Life campaign. Awesome. Yeah, like, going going and visiting the Children's Hospital was amazing. It's been so great to actually give back in a way that I've... You sometimes feel... Like you don't necessarily have the power to all the time in your day to day life, so it's kind of. And it, it, well, we all empower each other, and that's what's so crazy about this community is is everyone supports each other to such an amazing degree. And you know, I mean, we're we're just a channel for some of that positivity. But you uh, guys speaking make it of, happen. that's what it was. That was what the person was saying earlier. Oh, the God. Really good oh, question. God, that I remember. Oh, and I remember. What's oh God. Yeah. Uh, Kit bus and yes. rat queens. Yes. Because that is public, because someone brought that up in the announcements. One of the amazing, speaking of this this whole crazy escapade, doing amazing things for people. Um, yeah, Kit got contacted by Curtis Weeb, who is the writer and creator of Rat Queens, whom I know you guys have heard, Laura, and all the rest of us talk about that on the show all the time. Um, Kit is actually going to be doing the art for a Rat Queens webcomic. So, which is like fucking awesome. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah, I'm so glad because she, she is, she's earned it beyond, oh. beyond earned it. So, yeah. So cool when good people get together and get to do good things. And all because of because Colonel Morrill. It's crazy because well, of our dumb people be, because of her amazing talent. But yeah, but 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 we can. But yeah. the, the, it's be, the, that connection happened. Yeah, it's because, it's become this weird hub for a lot of things. It's been really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yay for kids' fake accent. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Maybe one day she'll uh, learn how to do a proper British accent, like Liam. You know, know. maybe or you. Uh, yeah. And I'm pressure having a real parade all of a sudden play D&D &D with you and all your fake accented characters. I know, and then she comes on and busts out a Russian accent. Like, what? It's fucking mic. awesome. Fucking awesome. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, questions. Liam does the best grog. <laughs> yeah. 
great. People doing their grog impressions. It's become a new thing. It's, be it's become a new thing. <laughs> Oh no, it looks like